Welcome to First Evangelical Free Church. Our church is really made of people, not wood and brick, and in the beginning, all of our people were Danish. On this site in 1882, 20 Danish immigrants built the first Danish Baptist Church of Cedar Falls. The charter members were all named Christensen, Hansen, Jensen, Nielsen, Olsen, or Peterson. They had belonged to the same free church in Denmark. They were not Baptists when they lived in Denmark. They accepted Baptist teachings through the efforts of Jens Henriksen, a friend from their former church. Jens Henriksen had immigrated earlier, settling for a time in Wisconsin. He became acquainted with Baptists there, accepted their teachings, was baptized, and later was ordained. In the early 1870s, he was pastor of a church in Clarks Grove, Minnesota. He wanted to preach the gospel and share his convictions with his friends in the Cedar Falls area. He traveled to Cedar Falls by rail and held his first meeting with them in a schoolhouse near Dyke. Soon he held another meeting in the home of Mr. and Mrs. Niels Peter Nielsen. He was able to meet frequently with his friends during the next year, and they became convinced that what he was telling them was true. Six of them were baptized in Black Hawk Creek, southwest of Cedar Falls, to publicly declare their faith. When Rev. Henriksen became pastor of a church in Racine, Wisconsin, he could no longer continue his visits to the Cedar Falls area. But others visited and preached here during that time. Missionary Marcus Hansen stayed for two months in the fall of 1878, and 14 conversions and baptisms resulted. Then, numbering 20, the local Danish Baptists decided to organize as a church. On November 24, 1878, they officially became the first Danish Baptist Church of Cedar Falls. The group met for three and a half years in the homes of three of the church families. Their membership fell to 16, and they concluded that a church building was necessary so that they would have enough space to invite others to worship with them. The Home Mission Society of the Danish Baptist Church of America gave $250 for their building project. They purchased a lot at 1015 Main Street for $175 and spent $775 more to build a simple frame church building on that site, this site, in 1882. The 11th and Main Street location was a good one because most of the Danes in Cedar Falls were living east of Main Street between 7th and 12th Streets. The new church asked their old friend, Jens Hendrickson, to become their pastor. He served from 1883 until his death in December of 1885. While he was pastor in Cedar Falls, he also held services once a month in Newell, Iowa, approximately 150 miles to the west. Sharing their pastor on a regular basis seems to have been a way for Danish Baptist churches to spread the gospel message to Danes in other communities and to assist them with establishing their own churches. Through the early years, pastors from the Cedar Falls Church held regular services in other communities besides Newell, such as in West Union, Marshalltown, Rhinebeck, Cedar Rapids, and West Branch. The church experienced great growth under the leadership of their third pastor, Rev. S. C. Nielsen. The Sunday School and Women's Society were organized during that time, and it became obvious that it was no longer possible to fit all members of the congregation inside at once. In 1889, remodeling of the building was completed, providing much needed space. Note that a steeple and arched windows and doors presented a more church-like appearance as well. When even more space was needed, the front part of the present building was constructed in 1917. The congregation had apparently considered raising the church and putting a basement underneath the existing building. But in January of 1916, they voted to proceed with a more long-term solution, if they could raise $5,000. By July, they had $5,020 in pledges. The cornerstone was laid on May 17, 1917. 
The dedication service was held on October 7th of that same year. The former church building was sold and moved to 13th and Walnut Streets, where it continued to be used for worship services. Our church's stained glass windows date from the 1917 construction. All of the multicolored glass windows were dedicated to early church members whose names may be seen on the windows or on small metal plates on the window sills. There is also a commemorative plaque on the communion table. We have been investigating each person who was memorialized. This south window is in memory of Mr. and Mrs. Hans Peterson. The Petersons were two of the charter members of the church. Mrs. Peterson, Kirsten, was the first adult Dane to be baptized within the city limits of Cedar Falls. She was baptized inside what was then the American Baptist Church, and many Danes who had never seen a baptism by immersion were present to witness this public declaration of her faith. After 1917, there were no other major changes to the church building until the early 1960s, well into the baby boom, when the need for more space for Sunday school classes prompted the addition of the brick educational wing at the rear of the building. The average Sunday school attendance then was 179, and the 18 classes had been meeting in every room and corner, even the kitchen and the former coal bin. Groundbreaking for the addition was March 12, 1961. The addition was in use in October. More recent changes to the building have included removing the dome above the main entry and changing the directional orientation of the sanctuary. Besides changes to the church building, the language used in the church changed over time. All church services were in Danish until 1919, when Sunday evening services were in English. In 1927, members voted for all services to be in English. A petition had been circulated and signed by many members before the congregational vote. It stated that, quote, the time has arrived when we can be of more service to a larger number of people if the language is changed to English, end of quote. The decision to change entirely to English fit well with the church's desire to serve the general public, especially the community's children, through Sunday school and vacation Bible school. The church was also developing an outreach to students from the teacher's college. Through the years of the Great Depression and continuing through World War II, the church ministered to a community in need of hope, and the church grew to its all-time highest membership of 241 in 1944. Use of written English progressed more slowly than spoken English, Minutes of some church meetings continued to be in Danish until December of 1930. The church constitution was translated into English in 1934. The church's name was changed to Calvary Baptist Church in 1932, but it was not changed on the cornerstone until 1935, which coincidentally was the year when the last surviving charter member passed away. In 1980, the name of the church was changed to Calvary Bible Church, to more closely describe the kind of church it was. Its latest name change was in 1988, upon officially merging with the First Evangelical Free Church. Whatever the language spoken, and whatever the church name, throughout the years this site has been home to a local church dedicated to teaching Bible truth in the hope that hearers will more fully understand God's grace and respond in faith to the gospel message. We want to share that message with you now in a way that may be new to you. The gospel is that there is this infinite, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful creator God that created all things for his glory. And you and I have belittled that, belittled his name, belittled his glory. Every one of us have at one time or another, or actually currently, believed that our way is better than God's. We fail to acknowledge, give him glory for the gifts he's given us. We question his rule and his authority, while at the same time doing that with the brain he gave us and holds together, and the lungs and the air that he gave us to breathe with. This is the great blasphemy of the universe. So we've all belittled God, and God being just right and holy is not going to allow the belittlement of his name. 
God then, not being able to spare wrath, sends Christ in the flesh and crushes him. And in so doing, pours out his wrath against the children of God onto the Son, killing him. Then God raises him from the dead. And that same power that raised Christ from the dead is now at work in those who would believe. This is the gospel. That you and I have right standing before God, not by our efforts, not by our works, not by our skill, not by whether or not we cuss or don't cuss, drink or don't drink, watch this, don't watch this, do this, don't do that, justified before God by the cross of Christ alone. Your lust, you're not going to be able to fix it. Your bitterness, you're not going to be able to fix it. Your rage, anger, those deviances that have been following you around, you don't possess the power of life and death. You can't resurrect anything. Christ can. That's the good news. That's why we don't celebrate us. That's why we continually celebrate him. We boast in the cross and the cross alone. The same power that is at work in raising Christ from the dead is at work in me and work in all who believe. This is the gospel. We continue to meet together to praise God, to study the Bible, to encourage one another, and to care for each other's needs. Besides assisting our own church members, we also want to be outward-looking, getting to know others in our neighborhood and throughout our community, and helping to meet their needs. Our Pray and Go program was designed to help us make our presence as a church known within our neighborhood. We have been leaving door hangers with our church's picture and contact information, and these words. At First Free Church, we love our community, so we are praying for our community. Let us know how we can pray for you. We also want to serve our community in more tangible ways. During the years when the Sturgis Falls Days Parade has passed our corner, we have opened our building to provide access to restrooms, we have provided activities for antsy children, and we have provided drinks and various types of food at no cost. Community members have appreciated this, and many parade watchers returned year after year. Other examples of ways we have been serving our community include providing a mini food pantry at the edge of our parking lot, hosting a playgroup for neighborhood children on early dismissal Wednesdays, providing snacks and child care during Love, Inc. financial literacy classes, and providing a performance space for the Iowa Chamber Music Collective.